The Banquet of Ghosts. In 1870, in Bavaria, King Ludwig lived in solitary splendor in his castle of Neuschwanstein, built on the summit of a precipitous rock. A member of the royal family of the Habsburgs, Ludwig was tainted with melancholia and a morbid dislike of people. Almost his only friend was the great composer Richard Wagner, whose career he sponsored and whom he worshipped with fantastic reverence. But Wagner went on to higher fields of endeavor leaving the unhappy Ludwig now completely alone. It is just before a banquet in the great hall of the castle. Ludwig is seated in a chair of state, entertaining some imaginary guests, exalted members of royalty. The leading soprano of the court opera company is singing Elsa's Dream from the Wagner Opera of Lohengrin. King Ludwig himself is dressed as Lohengrin in silver armor. Then the king, surrounded by his royal guests, who are invisible to all but himself, wanders toward the banquet hall. The court chamberlain announces his imaginary guests, who take their places at the perfectly appointed banquet table, a footman behind each empty chair. Her Imperial Majesty Catherine, Empress of all the Russias. The exalted supreme dictator of Rome, Julius Caesar. Her gracious majesty, Queen of Egypt, Cleopatra. His majesty, King Louis Ludwig of Bavaria. Pray be seated. Pray be seated. Ah, good evening. Good evening. Ah, Catherine, you will find our soup course very much to your liking. I have imported some Baltic eels from which the cook has prepared an essence. Uh, quite tantalizing, I assure you. And the wine, my dear Cleopatra. Uh, of course, I know it cannot compare with your own vintages. I beg your pardon? <laughs> you have me there, my dear. I cannot afford pearls for you to drop within the goblet. <laughs> uh, Hendrik. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Can you not see that Her Imperial Majesty, the Empress Catherine, has no wine? Oh, I beg your pardon, Your, your Majesty. I I'll attend to it immediately. <laughs> you must excuse our rustic simplicity, all of you. Ah, at last. Friends, may I propose a toast to our absent guest, His Royal Highness Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. Strange as it seems, this banquet of ghosts was often repeated by King Ludwig of Bavaria. At length, his eccentricities became so marked that he was declared incapable of ruling and was kept a virtual prisoner in his castle. Broken-hearted, 
At this humiliation, the gentle music-loving Ludwig committed suicide. The Pony Express. It is 1861 at the Pony Express station in St. Joe, Missouri. A young boy, 15 years old, named Bill Cody, has finally prevailed upon the head of the express depot at St. Joe to allow him to carry the mails. All set, Bill. All set, boss. Remember now, shoot first, think afterwards. If any engines come your way. Oh, I will. <laughs> no matter what happens, the mail must go through. Uh, gosh, I don't like to let a kid like you leave the depot. Oh, I'm no kid. <laughs> Goodbye, boss. Leaving St. Joe, young Bill Cody heads his fast western pony along the twisting Missouri River. Twenty, thirty, fifty miles go by. The boy's throat becomes parched with thirst, his lungs choked with dust. Finally, looming up ahead is the first relay station where he is to change horses. Well, you're a pretty young kid to be riding the express. I'm no kid. Now listen, kid. A word of warning. Between here and the next station, you may run into a herd of buffalo. If you do, your only chance is to stampede them with a shot. And trust to God that they run away from you and not at you. You get it? I get it. Now don't forget, the mail must go through. I won't forget. So long, boss. The sun gradually sinks below the horizon. The moon comes up. The only sound is the occasional wail of a wolf or coyote. Then in the distance, a great black, slowly moving mass outlines itself against the purple sky. And Bill realizes that this is the buffalo herd, 10,000 strong, blocking the trail. Come on there, old paint. Come on. We got to go through them. Come on. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. stretches on. Bill has had no food, nothing to drink for over 24 hours. Finally, at nightfall, he gallops up to his last relay station, the end of the trail for young Bill Cody. Hey, your relief man was scalped by a bunch of Indians. Huh? I'd take the next horse myself, but I'm laid up with a stiff knee. Give me something to eat. I'll take it. Sure, you can't do that. Oh, I'm not very tired. But you're only a kid. I'm no kid. Give me a sandwich or something. I'll eat it on the road. Well, the mail can't be held up. But on the other hand... Oh, I can do it. Okay, kid. The Express will thank you for this. And so instead of the expected rest for burning eyes and tortured muscles... Bill has to cover another 290 miles, all without a chance to rest. The moon comes up, goes down. Another gray dawn breaks. One after another, the tired horses gallop up to the relay stations. The precious mail sacks are thrown over the backs of fresh horses. And each time, the exhausted boy gallops off, a determined smile on his dust-caked face. Suddenly, in the distance, Indians! Indians! Come on there, Buster! Keep on going! Ah, I got one of them! Keep on going! Keep going! We got four miles left, old boy! We gotta make it! Come on! Come on! At last in the distance looms up his last relay station, the one before Fort Kearney. One quarter of the way to Sacramento, where the mail is to be delivered. My last shots! 
Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here, I'll hold them engines off. Use that pinto over there. He's got good wind. Got all but three of them, the devils. How are you fixed? All set? Okay. Say, how long you been riding? Oh, not that long, boys. Only one more lap to go. I, I can make it. I don't like to let a kid like you start out on this last lap. However, we can't afford to lose the mail. How old are you? I'm no kid. So long, boys. <laughs> At last came Fort Kearney, and young Bill Cody on his first and last ride for the Pony Express tumbled off his horse and delivered the mail safely to the next relay after a ride of 384 miles. After that, he was a judge too young for the service. Later on, he became the immortal Buffalo Bill. Strange as it seemed, in all the 600,000 dangerous miles traveled by the daring riders of the Pony Express, only one letter was lost. 